Good afternoon. We will start this webinar within five minutes. Let me just give you some technical information for the meeting today. Please unmute your micro, except when giving the floor. Translation will be available via an application called Interprefy. You can read the exact name on your screen, um, which you can download on your phone, whether it's an Android or an Apple one. Once entering the application, you will be asked for a token. Use the token ELO271020. So ELO together with today's date, and then choose, choose the language of preference, which will be either English or Polish. For those who have an interest to ask questions, please use the function questions in the panel on the right side of your screen. Thank you. I will repeat this message within two minutes just before starting the webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this webinar, what to expect from the next EU forest strategy. I first of all have a technical announcement. Uh, please unmute your microphone, except when you are giving the floor. Translation will be available via an application which is called Interprefy, and you see the name on the screen in front of you. This application you can download on your phone, whether it's an Android one or an Apple one. Once you're entering the application, you will be asked to fill in a token. Make use of the token ELO271020. That is ELO together with today's date. And then please, please choose the language of your choice, will be, which will be either English or Polish. For those who have an interest in asking questions to our panelists, you can make use of the function questions in the panel on the right side of your screen. And then to start to today's session, I will leave the floor to the member of the European Parliament, Simon, Simone schmidt -Bauer. She will take the floor as the chair of the meeting. Simone, word is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much and good afternoon all. I would like to welcome you here today on this third online seminar of the Intergroup Biodiversity, Hunting and Countryside. This time to discuss the new European Forest Strategy, which will be presented by the Commission early next year. Unfortunately, my dear colleague Alvaro Amaro, President of the Intergroup, cannot be with us online today due to a last minute commitment which couldn't be postponed. So perhaps many of you, some of you know that I'm from Styria in Austria, and it's also called the Green Heart of Austria. This has a very a simple reason, because uh, more than 60% of the surface of Styria is covered by forest, and a total of 48% uh, of Austrians' surface is covered by forests. I'm also a forest owner myself, so forests have been always very important to me, and to my family. Having said that, it's my pleasure as a vice president of the Intergroup to chair this online event on his behalf. Mr. Amaro was uh, kind enough to send us a video for this event that will be shown in a few minutes. 
As we pointed out many times in the past events of our intergroup plays an important role raising and gathering the voices and the various stakeholders which are directly involved in the rural world. Land and forest management, food supply chain and also biodiversity conversation at European level. Before starting the real talk, I would like to thank today's speakers, my board colleagues from the intergroup, our moderator, and our secretariat, uh, ELO and FASE, but particularly um, ELO, which co-organized this event with us. Only a few weeks ago, the European Parliament adopted its resolution on the future EU forest strategy, led by my dear colleague, Petre Zavama. And in a few months' time, the European Commission is expected to publish the new forest strategy early 2021. It's for these reasons why I believe this event takes place at the right moment, asking the right questions. Today's agenda is well balanced between uh, technical, political, empirical knowledge amongst the various views which will be presented. And that's why I would like to thank you all for having accepted our invitation. I look forward to having your views in this, on this new strategy, which is uh, crucial for the future of forest managers and to understand how the European Commission is moving forward in defining the different actions of the strategy. So without further delay, we will listen to our President Alvaro Amaro recorded intervention and then I will shall give the floor to our moderator. Thank you. Dear participants, dear friends, I regret not being with you today, participating in one more event of our intergroup, Biodiversity, Handing and Countryside. But I share, do to a last minute, with you today, participating in one more event of our intergroup. diversity, handing and countryside. But I share do to a to a last minute personal commitment which unfortunately could not be postponed. However I am sure that we will have a fruitful debate about what we need and when. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we seem to have a small technical problem as the video is not showing on your screen. Um, so I propose that we skip. Last minute uh, personal commitment, which unfortunately could not be postponed. Dear participants, dear friends, I regret not being with you today, participating in one more event of our intergroup, Biodiversity, Handing and Countryside. But I share do to a last minute. Ladies and gentlemen, as you see, we have a technical problem. We are getting an indication from the GoToWebinar 
uh, server that the <coughs> connections in Brussels at the moment are extremely slow. That's probably because of the COVID measures as a lot of people are working from home right now. So I'm going to give to skip the video uh, uh, presentations. And then first of all, I would like to tell you that uh, member of the European Parliament, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mozanowska was not able to attend today due to another meeting. Uh, she's asked us to be excused. And that makes that I will introduce you immediately uh, to our first panel. And today we are discussing the forest strategy. And the forest strategy is at the core of the EU Green Deal implementation. It is scheduled for 2021, but already forestry management is being discussed as part of the EU biodiversity strategy. This is why I invite the European Commission DG Environment with Claudia Olazabel to give her insights on the next EU forest strategy. This is Claudia Olazabel, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Can you see me? We see you and we hear you. You're very, very much welcome. Good. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much. I would like to first uh, thank uh, the members of parliament that have organized this very timely and, and very um, sought for uh, session. And also, of course, the ELO for not only organizing this with the members of parliament, but also inviting the commission to give its uh, preliminary views on what can we expect from the forest strategy. What I would like to start saying is, well, the forest strategy, we've had already several. We had one in 78, one in 98, one in 2013, that is now, let's say, expiring in 2020. So now we will have one for the next decade. So this is not a new exercise, but why is this time, this strategy um, in triggering so much uh, interest and so much discussion and, uh, and so much uh, um, attention, political attention. What would we have seen between 2013, when the, the previous one was adopted, and now um, the, the role of forest and the importance of forest in the eyes of, of the citizens have increased enormously. We've been all confronted with terrible images of storms on TV, of, um, of landslides, We've been, we've seen uh, deforestation in outside of the EU. We have seen uh, forest fires inside and outside the EU with devastating and even some casualties involved. Um, so this this has really uh, in times of the, or, or increased the interest and the attention of, of the people um, on forest and, uh, and this has led also to the fact that uh, that everybody has realized that forest is really at the heart of two of the biggest challenges that we will have in the next decades. One is, the, of course, the climate change crisis and the other one is the biodiversity crisis. And the forests are really at the heart of these two challenges as being really at the heart of the solution also of these two challenges, given the importance of forest both for climate change mitigation and adaptation, as well as for biodiversity protection. But also these forests have and have had for centuries a key role in the rural vitality and the economy and, 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 and on the, on the social uh, interactions in rural areas. So that's why uh, forests have been put at the heart of really key um, uh, new agendas in terms of the rural vision that, that we need to develop, in terms of the climate change, and in terms of the biodiversity crisis that we need to tackle. So really, all of a sudden, forests are in the, in the heart of the storm, in the eye of the storm, uh, for many, many people and many stakeholders. Um, the new forest strategy then, it's then developed in a completely different, I would say, political setup, as in 2013. It will be developed in the Commission with a leadership of three co-leadership of three DGs on equal footing. That would be DG Agriculture, DG Environment, in DG Climate Action. So the three would, would be uh, co-leading this initiative. But you need to know that um, beyond the co-leadership, there's a number of other services of the Commission which have a lot 
of um, things to do with forests, which could be DG industry and DG grow uh, for the uh, forest-based industries, of course, also on plant health and uh, reproductive material, that's DG Sante, of course, the international aspects on, on development and cooperation, that's DEFCO. So, the, of course, humanitarian aid and uh, disaster prevention, that is ECHO. So, there's a number of DGs which are intimately linked with uh, forest and forest management. So, that really, I would like to give to you that this is really a huge joint venture across the European Commission. So, next, uh, first, next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. So I will. I will not. Don't worry. I will not go uh, and and repeat the whole Green Deal, but I would like to highlight a number of of points of the Green Deal because that, at the end of the day, it's going to be to a large extent the mandate on which the European Forest Strategy will be based. So the the European Green Deal, and if you you can uh, you can keep on clicking because there's a lot of things that will appear in this slide. Um, has a number of key initiatives. Go. I will. I will certainly would like to highlight four, which of course there are points which will be linked uh, uh, to forests more widely. But there are four which which uh, I think we would need to to look here. Next slide. Next slide. One is the climate agenda, and for which forests will be absolutely crucial, both in terms of securing the necessary sinks and carbon sequestration, the massive carbon sequestration we are going to need to reach our, our uh, climate neutrality by 2050, as we have agreed all to achieve. So forest sinks are going to be really at the heart of achieving that very ambitious uh, objective. So there, there, there is a whole climate agenda, which will of course be done also in parallel to the forest strategy, but would be very much uh, enshrined in the EU forest strategy as being a key part of the kind of uh, forest related policies that we need to develop. And, and we need to secure that the forests are sufficiently um, healthy and functioning as to really become the kind of sink at the scale we will need to achieve climate neutrality. We will also have, as you will see there, a whole uh, issue of energy efficiency that leads to a renovation wave. And why do I mention the renovation wave? Because the Green Deal already, and you will see uh, in, in my other next slides, uh, there's a big push for bio-based products. Uh, in terms of the renovation base and the use of, of wood uh, in those renovation waves and also or on a more uh, broader discussion of um, replacing fossil fuel uh, products by bio-based products uh, that we will see certainly in several parts of the Green Deal appearing. Next slide. It takes a bit of time, I think, from, from the moment I say it and until it appears. The circular economy, the industrial, the new circular economy uh, package of the Green Deal also gives a big, um, a big uh, push to, to bio-based products. Uh, if you keep clicking, uh, you will see, sorry, in the bio-based, uh, in the circular economy, there's a lot of elements that I will get into later, which it's replacing uh, plastics with bio-based products, and we will see those. The, the third big package that you will see in the Green Deal is, of course, uh, the EU biodiversity strategy and the whole biodiversity agenda and how to halt biodiversity laws within and outside the EU. So that's uh, that also, it's at the heart of what will be in the EU forest strategy. Next slide, please. The international agenda. That also you need to keep in mind that the Green Deal has a very big component 
of um, leading by example in the international uh, agenda and a big geopolitical uh, agenda behind the Green Deal to also export and expect from third countries and particularly trading partners that will follow also the kind of sustainability and green growth agenda that we are following. So keep in mind that also there is a very big strong component of exporting with our geopolitics and with a green diplomacy what we will be doing in the Green Deal. And that also will transpire in the EU forest strategy. Next, next uh, slide, please. Yeah, it takes a bit of time. It, the, it does go into some of the problems that uh, that can be seen in forest and it basically I will not get into all the details but but I've, I've put all this in the slides so that you will have the chance to look at this at home and um, and it does say that the whole aim is because of forest ecosystems are under increasing pressure we need to increase uh, the quality and the quantity of our forest next one please on the action, uh, one of the things that uh, uh, that I was saying is all EU packaging in the EU is reusable and recyclable. So there is a big push for bio-based products in, in recycling. There's a big push, as you will say, to tackle uh, false green claims. So there will be um, a, a political steer to really prove or allow uh, producers and, 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 and primary producers to show that really their green credential are, are such. And so there will be indeed methods to avoid uh, uh, false green claims. Um, also that would, would help bio-based products. It would be uh, green public purchasing uh, would be promoted. Um, also boost the market of secondary raw materials with mandatory recycled contents. That would also be pushing for bio-based fibers um, to be used in recycled products. And as I said, the renovation wave. So as you can see, there will be already be a lot of uh, sustainable bioeconomy pushed by the Green Deal, which will also be seen in the forest strategy. Next slide, please. Uh, I will, I will, this is what also the Green Deal is already saying that we will be doing on the biodiversity strategy, but I will, uh, I've put that so that you have the whole picture uh, in your slides, but I will not go into the details, but it was already uh, highlighting what would be in the biodiversity strategy, which I will see in the next slides. If we go to the next slides, you can skip this one and you can see there, uh, it's all about uh, increasing the quantity and the quality of forest, help increase the CO2 emission uh, absorptions, uh, resilience against uh, many of the climate change effects, promote bioeconomy, which is already what I've seen, incentivize forest managers to preserve growth and manage sustainably through the cap and other in incentives, and to promote the imports of products that do not involve deforestation and forest degradation. Next slide, please. Two things which are or a bit hidden in the in the green in the green deal, but I think have a direct bearing on forest. And I would like to mention here is is increase our ability to predict and manage environmental disasters, which include not only but certainly also uh, disasters that we see happening in forest that are causing a lot of damage in forest. And there is this uh, intention to have a really a uh, high precision digital model of the earth. And I think this would also help in terms of information gathering that could also have a very uh, big uh, advantage for forest. And of course, there is a big will and push in the Green Deal to help rural areas to harness the opportunities of the circular bioeconomy. And, and, and there is in development this rural vision that we would want to have. What are the rural, how should the rural areas we want for Europe uh, how to construct those. Next, uh, next uh, slide, please. I will go into the uh, biodiversity strategy very, very fast because I know that many of you already know it. But I would, I think it's important to to highlight the main elements, which are also likely to be, and in the EU forest strategy. Next slide, please.
So the, the EU biodiversity strategy has two big pillars. One is protect nature, and then we have this idea of having 30% of EU land and EU seas and as protected areas, that it would include Natura 2000 and areas under national designation with different levels of, of, of uh, protection, of course. We are roughly at 26 inland, so inland is not going to be a huge effort to go to 30. The, 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 the big effort would rather be on, on the sea, but it's, it's not the, the topic we're dealing on today. But so it's in terms of protection and in terms of area under protection, it's not going to be a big change compared to what we have now. But we also want to make sure that it's not only about designation, but that those areas are properly managed. Out of these uh, 30%, what we are proposing is to have a third, so 10% of strictly protected areas. And there we are already we are saying that we should include their primary and old growth forest. The 10% does not only need to be primary and old growth forest. Of course, there are many other habitats that would make up. That could be peatland, wetlands, and other very uh, very biodiversity rich uh, uh, habitats. So it should not only come from from forests, of course, but those are the kind of forests that we we could be tackling or targeting with the 10%. And of course, uh, we need to come up with a, an agreed definition, which is what we are doing uh, together with with a number of uh, with all the member states and a number of stakeholders on all growth forests that need to be defined and mapped in the EU. Next one, the next pillar of the biodiversity strategy is to restore. There's a number of things that are uh, of actions which are, are uh, announced there on the restoration. I would only highlight those which are particularly linked to, to forests and which we will be seeing again happening in and, and developed in the EU forest strategy. So next, if you put next slide on restore, So there will be a, a, a legally binding instrument that will be proposed by the Commission next year with legally binding targets uh, and the, the, the whole consultation for that legally binding instrument will be launched soon. The idea is really no deterioration of any protected habitats and we to achieve a positive trend for at least 30%. Have the number of red list species threatened by invasive alien species that also are linked to forests, but not only. The 3 billion new trees planting pledge, uh, respecting ecological principle. This, this initiative that we have announced, uh, very dear to Vice President Timmermans, and uh, has attracted a lot of attention, the planting pledge. We need, and I would like to say that although we, we the wording does say that it's actively planting 3 billion trees, in reality, uh, uh, a considerable share of this would actually come from natural restoration. But it also needs to be said that these, these uh, trees would, would of course be uh, enlarging forest areas, afforesting new areas, but it has also uh, has a, an agricultural component with the promotion of agroforestry and a very strong urban component by planting trees in cities to green cities. So this, this, uh, this planting pledge goes well beyond forest, of course includes forest, and it will be included in the EU, by the, in the EU forest strategy. The reverse, the decline in pollinators, that it's also uh, relevant to forest. Next one, please. So we have there increased the quantity and, and quality of forest. Uh, the, the, the old forest needs to be preserved in good health, announcing the forest strategy, further development of the forest information system for Europe. Next one. The, the planting pledge, I've just said, the, cap, the role of the cap strategic plans and also cohesion policy funds is crucial. The, the funding issue that also was um, very much uh, highlighted in the resolution of the European Parliament, the need to secure uh, sufficient funding for this. It's something that, that indeed uh, we are very well aware. And uh, the, the Commission will develop uh, in parallel guidelines on biodiversity friendly afforestation and reforestation. Next one. 
Um, the share of forest areas under management plan should cover all public forest areas and increase number of private forest areas. The biodiversity uh, practices and, and the development of guidelines on closer to nature forestry practices, which are being now developed with member states and uh, with uh, all relevant stakeholders. Next one. Um, in terms of bioenergy, we will continue the approach of extending to all bioenergy the shift to advanced biofuels, that is uh, on, uh, on non-reusable and non-recyclable waste. Uh, we do say that uh, the use of whole trees and food and feed crops should be minimized. The assessment of the EU global biomass supply and demand will be coming by the end of this year and will develop in the context of uh, energy policy operational guidance on new sustainability criteria. So that's the part rather on energy related. Next one. And so now I would like to, uh, notwithstanding that of course this is preliminary ideas that are under development and we will, and I will say that in my light, late, last uh, slide on uh, the public consultation that will be launched soon. This is the preliminary ideas, of course, awaiting the, um, uh, the whole uh, wide consultation we will be doing. And for that, the resolution recently adopted by the European Parliament, as well as the Council conclusions which are being developed under the German presidency, will be extremely helpful. So. I will. I will just um, would like to put you in in a, a mindset of what do we need? We need to first see what kind of uh, forest we want for the future. So how we would we be plan if we could start from scratch? What we would be planning for future uh, of our future um, forest? So for our future forest, uh, if we're going to start. Um, uh, afforesting new areas or allowing or increasing um, forest areas, we need to uh, to think what kind of species and think what kind of climate change we will ha be having and for what purpose we will be having those uh, those forests. So there's a whole planification to be had, and we need we need to know about adaptation of forests. We need to do about we need to plan for their resilience. We need to see which species. We need to see how can those uh, be able to to withstand the new climatic conditions and the new um, uh, demands on them. So in that sense, there's a whole planification. What we would need for to for that we would need research. We would need new training and perhaps new skills in in the in the forestry sector. Uh, we would need to englobe this new future forest inside the rural communities and inside their, their rural economies, how will they fit in, 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 in the social setup of those rural communities that are gonna, that are gonna uh, absorb them. Um, we need to come up with innovative uh, forest-based services and products. So there, there's a whole forecasting and, and, and planification uh, for what would be the, the, the future forest that we would want in the EU. Uh, and, and where we can have the luxury, between quotation marks, of starting with a blank sheet of paper. But then, so that, that would be one part of the, of, 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 of the elements that could be in the, in the forest strategy. We would also want to have, um, what do we do with um, the ones we already have, the, the forest that we already have? Uh, those uh, were made, were planted, uh, years or sometimes sometimes centuries ago, and and the choices we have are those that were made and the decisions were made on them. But but we can uh, and I like to use that word, but but is, this is my personal word. How to retrofit those those uh, those existing forests? What we would need uh, to make those those existing forests um, look as much as we want as the future ones. So how to enhance their, their protection and, and, uh, and their health, how to preserve and enhance the stocks of carbon they already have, how to make them more resilient and, and more resistant and less vulnerable 
to the already appearing climate change effects, how to restore the ones which are already very degraded and, and, and have difficulties to, to make it, how to ensure that we have a sustainable forest management in those so that the management is allowing them to look as much as possible as, as the kind of, of forest we want and, and need in the Europe for the future. So there will be a whole component on what do we do with the forests we already have in order to upgrade them and restore them and, and, and make them more resilient and more um, um, adapted to climate change. And then for either for the future ones or either for the current ones, we would need some enabling conditions. We need a, a stronger and more inclusive governance framework. Uh, for forest. We need a stronger combination between the national forest policies and, and the Claude, green development. I'm going to interrupt you. Could you please come to an end because I have uh, to keep track of the timing. Absolutely, absolutely. This Thank is a, 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 this one and, and then I will go directly to the timing for the public consultation. So we need more improved communication and dialogue. We need financing, we need research and we need consistency with international commitments. So next, uh, next you can uh, go through the next slides because this is basically what I've said, but I've englobed it in future and 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 present uh, forest. You can go ahead. Go ahead. So this is my last slide. So in terms of timing and consultation, in the next few weeks uh, we will put in the web the roadmap and there will be for consultation for four weeks in the fall we will have a full 12 weeks online questionnaire where people uh, and stakeholders and and everyone who wishes to participate will be able to participate in all the languages uh, all the official languages of the eu we will have adult ad hoc consultations in different specialized uh, fora and uh, specialized groups and the plan adoption is for first quarter 2021 of the forest strategy. So this is uh, in terms of how uh, you being public and stakeholders would be able to participate. So this is my last slide. I will be very happy to reply to your question uh, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Claudia, thank you very much. Also as a scientific director of the European Landowners Organization, I have a keen interest in this file. But it's good that uh, to get an overview on uh, what the actual status of play is. Um, earlier on, uh, we had a problem due to network connections in Brussels, but we have been in contact with our external video provider in the meantime. We will now launch the video from outside of Brussels. And so we will show you the video of Alvaro Amaro, who is the president of this intergroup, and then immediately followed by uh, a video of Petri Sarvama, member of the European Parliament and also member of this intergroup and rapporteur for the European Parliament's initiatives report on the EU forest strategy. I give the floor to our... Dear participants, dear friends, I regret not being with you today, participating in one more event of our intergroup, biodiversity, handing and countryside. But I share due to a last minute personal commitment which unfortunately could not be postponed. However, I am sure that we will have a fruitful debate about what we need and went from the forests and the future. I will, in this context, I will thank to my colleague, Simon Schmidt-Bauer, my vice president, for having accepted to share this event on uh, my behalf. Before any consideration, uh, we must bear in mind that about all of the European Union's territory is covered by forests. They are the lands of Europe. In addition, and this is also extremely important, we must recognize that the European Union has 
many different types of forests, reflecting its geoclimatic diversity. The current situation in terms of legislative coherence, coherence and coordination is, we need to say this, is chaotic in this way. The European Parliament called for European Union strategy, forestry strategy, to help achieve the Green Pact goal of reducing 60% 60, 60 of CO2 emissions by 2030, compared to 99, uh, 919 levels. Our position reflected in the European Parliament's report is a well-managed and organized forest. But about this, you will listen to my colleague Peter Salvama, which will present the European Parliament position on this strategy, which we recently approved. A sustainably managed forest is a healthy forest with a positive impact in, on maintaining biodiversity, but also on the social and economic, economical, economic viability of rural regions in the future, especially those areas subject to natural or other specific conditions. To do this, we must emphasize the crucial role of the common agriculture policy. In particular, investments in the second pillar, farmers and forests, Dear participants, dear friends, I regret Hello, everyone. When I was given uh, the role of rapporteur in this European Parliament for the EU's forest strategy, I could not have been happier and more excited. The times we are living, you know, with forests, it's everybody is talking about the fires, the floods, the drought, the pest infestations, etc. The grave uh, challenges that our beautiful forests in Europe are facing. And the European Union, of course, and its Commission has as their central task for the years to come, for the 2020s, to tackle and fight the, cli the climate change and the global warming. So hence we have a situation where the Commission and the European Union has put its eggs and its stakes in the climate change basket. And at the same time, um, we have to look after our forests because they will be uh, the most important factor in, in trying to meet uh, these uh, very difficult challenges that we are facing. So, so that was the starting uh, situation last year, last October in 2019 when we started the work. And I have to say that I'm, I'm pretty happy with the outcome that the European uh, Parliament adopted in its plenary uh, uh, this October in 2020. Um, it is, first of all, uh, you know, I built the forest strategy for the Union um, from a couple of very basic solid uh, cornerstones. One is the multifunctionality of the forests. We have to understand that uh, the forests really provide for us all and for everything we have. Um, the second is the understanding that it has to be built, the forest strategy has to be built on, on three basic pillars, the economic, the environmental and the social aspects. So uh, I started to build uh, a holistic um, paper that addresses 
all these and addresses them all equally. And this is, this is now politically, of course, very exciting because from the other corner come the people who say that we should actually um, put the, uh, uh, the climate challenges sort of like uh, in the first place and make sure that we stop the, you know, the droughts and the, uh, the destruction caused by the, uh, the pest infestation, etc., by protecting the forests. Now, where I come from, both uh, generally speaking and, and, and uh, geographically in, in Europe, um, we see it very, very differently. We think that we have to have sustainable forest management um, to, to have this balance in the forests so that the, uh, the biodiversity is preserved and even fostered, that the economic uh, values of the forest can be used, and that the, the huge recreational um, uh, value that the forests have um, can also be uh, taken into account. So those are the three elements. And I have to say, out of the 57 paragraphs that we have in the final outcome, I would like to quote you one, uh, a couple of sentences that I'm maybe the most satisfied with. I think that, that, that this, what I'm about to read to you, actually um, tells pretty much the whole story. Here it goes. Um, points out that achieving the EU's goals for environment, climate, and biodiversity will never be possible without forests that are multifunctional, healthy, and sustainably managed, applying a long-term perspective together with viable forest-based industries. That pretty much sums it up, and I wish you have a, a fantastic event today, and my best wishes to everyone. Okay, and that makes that we are now back from the ELO headquarters in Brussels with thank to our external video provider for launching this video from outside Brussels, allowing us to have a look at them. But that makes that we now come to our panelists. And a first panelist I would like to introduce to, to you is Frédéric Petit. He's the NTF president, uh, which NTF is the rural owners in Wallonia. And they are defending the rights of rural property uh, in Wallonia. Uh, NTF is devoted to help a sustainable management of rural land heritage at the economic, social, environmental, and cultural level. Frédéric Petit is at the same time also an advisor in forest estate management. And Mr. Petit, I would like to give you the floor. Do you hear me? Yes. No, do hear and see you. Okay, see, thank you. Yours. Okay, uh, thank you for your invitation. So, uh, so, Mr. Uh, Jürgen Tag said, I am uh, president of the Walloon Land and Forest Owners Union. And I will speak to you about the Walloon specificity and what uh, we are expecting from the EU. EU. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, Belgium is a small country and Wallonia is the southern part of Belgium. In Belgium, uh, forests cover uh, 700,000 uh, 700, hectares and the Walloon forest a uh, little bit more than uh, 550,000 hectares. Uh, that means 80% of the Belgian forest. 
Uh, Eighty-six uh, percent of the forest is productive uh, in uh, Wallonia. The hardwood stands cover uh, fifty-seven uh, percent of the productive forest, and the growth is uh, one million three hundred thousand cubic meter per year, and the harvest is um, eight hundred seventy-four thousand cubic meter per year that means 67 percent of the growth in the softwood stands uh, the, the softwood stands cover uh, 41 percent of the productive forest the growth is uh, two million um, three thousand uh, three hundred thousand uh, cubic meter per year and the harvest is uh, 3 uh, million cubic meter per year. That means 133% of the growth. The volume wood sector um, is uh, representing uh, by uh, 8,000 enterprises, representing 18,000 direct jobs. Next slide, please. What are the biggest uh, challenges for private forest owners? First point is to restore the forest areas affected by the bark beater crisis and various health crises. So as, uh, for example, ash calarosis uh, since 10 years, uh, withering of beech and other species, species Second point, to make the right choices for reforestation species, uh, to find species that are adapted to climate change, and not ban softwood, because it represents a great part of wood production uh, in, uh, in Belgium and also in other countries. Scientific research must find solutions. Third point is to restore confidence. Many producers in Belgium are discouraged. Other point is to make progress in forest practices. To plant mixtures of species, evolve to stands of multiple age when possible, and practice, practice regular thinning. And last point, to manage to maintain a level of production equivalent to the current level and harvest as close as possible to this level of production for the entire Walloon forest. Next slide, please. Are there sufficiently effective regional or national policies? It's a pity, but they are non-existent in Belgium. There isn't even a health crisis management procedure. No windfall plan and no health crisis management. However, on October 16, 2020, our Walloon Minister for Forestry announced an aid for the reforestation of a more resilient forest. A mixed forest, but details, details must be persist in the next month. And second point, the establishment in 2021, this um, next uh, year, of a working group to develop a regional forest plan. Next slide, please. Ursula von der Leyen, in a plenary session of the European Parliament of September 6, 16, 2020, uh, in the next generation EU, target, announced a target of minus 55% of greenhouse gas, gas and a, a budget of 700 uh, 750 billion euros. She said the construction sector can be transformed into carbon sinks and therefore stop being a source of carbon if we use organic building materials such as wood. 
I want next generation EU to spark a wave of European renewal. That's a very good news. Next slide, please. What Europe has already planned? The EFRD um, include five financial support measures for the forest and wood sector. One euro given by the Walloon region gives one euro, one euro from the United Union for the aid for afforestation, the agroforestry, the prevention and repair of damage caused by climate change, disease and disasters, investment to improve resilience and investment in the wood sector. All these five measures are not activated in Wallonia. I see not, uh, uh, it's a real pity. Next slide, please. What are the expected responses from uh, the European Union? First, to encourage member states to define an implement of common forestry policy through mandatory or incentive measures to achieve common objectives. These common objectives should be to ensure a good balance to, between the various functions of the forest, economic, environmental, and social. It means divisions of tasks between distinct areas. Areas dedicated to the conservation of nature or fragile ecosystems and stimulated wood production areas. To preserve the economic function because wood production means atmospheric carbon fixation. One cubic meter of wood fixes one ton of CO2. And the important role in terms of jobs in the wool wood sector. Second point on the next slide. To encourage member states to activate financial support mechanism for the wood sector via the EFRD, afforestation or reforestation aid for forest producers, but also aid for the maintenance of plantations and the management of forests. Third, to consider a compensation mechanism for forest producers who produce wood and fix CO2. Such a mechanism is beginning to be established in some countries, but could be generalized. For example, the low carbon label, label in France. The next slide, the fourth point, through an extensive public information com campaign on the economic role of the forest, to promote social adherence to the production and harvesting of wood for wider use. Too many citizens ignore the re renewable nature of forest production and see timber harvesting as a crime against nature. And fifth and last point, to encourage member countries to make greater use of wood in construction, but also in the packaging sector. Wood is a substitute for PVC. Next slide. The assets of Wallonia. Forests and, and, forests and wood are Wallonia's major assets to be part of the European project for a new low carbon circular economy. Next, please. As conclusion, 
I would like to tell you for future generations, we must build the forest of tomorrow today. This is our responsibility as producers. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, Walloon and European politicians, your responsibility to help us build a better and more beneficial future environment to all. Next, please. I will now thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Okay, Frederick, then I will thank you for giving this presentation, which was uh, very interesting. Um, before uh, we give you the, the pleasure of answering some of the questions, we will first go to the other panel uh, panelists. And our next uh, panelist is Dr. Eckhart uh, Senitsa. Uh, he's having a, a consultancy uh, a bureau for forestry, but simultaneously also took over the family estate with 850 hectares of forest, farmland, hunting and fishing, timber transport, even hydroelectrics. But the reason he's here is that he is the president of ProSilva Austria, and that is already since 2012. And he has a very strong team over there with about 460 members. Uh, he intensified the contacts to the neighboring countries, including Italy, Slovenia, Germany, and Switzerland. And now he helps to build a network of exemplary forests in Austria and contributes establishing a net of reference stands for nature-based best practices examples according to the AFI standard. Uh, Dr. Senica, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I hope you can hear me and you can see me and I please switch the, the presentation on. Thank you. I was invited as uh, president of ProSilva, that's a Europe-wide organization. And I will give you a short overview. I will not go to each detail on the on the slides, but just ProSilva now exists more than 30 years. We have 20 full members in Europe and some more are under construction or under development. We recently have new contact points in the Western Balkans and also a strong group from Poland who wish to establish ProSilva Polonia. Um, we have 5,500 individual members, not just 460 in Austria, we have 5,500 individual members in the whole Europe uh, regions. And we are a mixture of scientists, forest managers, and administration practitioners. The, the first start was to, the, there was a group of professors, in the culture professors, that found their inspiration in the virgin forest and learned what, how nature functions and to take uh, these principles to manage forest, learn by doing step by step. And we have uh, a big network with um, good communication on the same level. So it's a peer to peer communication. Uh, by the way, ProSilva is a European trademark. trademark. We use the Latin name as a bridge, not in English or French one. So it was the Latin name for the forest close to nature forestry. Um, the next slide, please. Can, yeah, thank you. Uh, it was mentioned to build the forest strategy on three pillars. Uh, for Silver defined uh, the principles on four, but it, it's quite the same. In fact, we have the ecosystem approach. We need protection of soil and climate. Of course, the production of timber and then the fourth, uh, recreation and cultural aspects. These are uh, these principles are written down in I was were written down in 2012, I think, and published in three languages. And in the meantime, we translated it to Spanish and to Portuguese language also. And there will be maybe a Polish version follow soon. Please the next. Thank you. In addition to the principles. There were a few papers, not just many papers published dealing with further principles, and they cover almost all topics that are now in discussion. So we have, for example, principles of the Mediterranean forest, biodiversity, the non-native tree species, and landscape protection. So there's a long uh, interaction between forest and man, and we should not forget about the history. 
like this historical painting shows and we we have sometimes now uh, some rom romantic approach that this would be the best uh, like on the on this uh, picture but we have very different forests and the man always is in interaction with with forest thank you the next one just a few words what is for silver doing we having uh, annual meetings since the since the founding in uh, 2000 in, in uh, 1989 the only year there was no Congress is this year. So we had to postpone our meeting from Luxembourg to the next year. We hopefully will have this. And there were big Congresses also with more than 400 participants. So it was really a huge movement and is still uh, developing forward. What is one main issue was always establishment of exemplary forest, go to the forest, see it in practice, and now we are going to have more and more cooperational cooperations with uh, different projects and and um, also go more to press releases etc so you can find all these papers on the website uh, prosilva.org please go to the next one uh, one thing is we are really orientated to practical forestry we want to establish this network of exemplary forests that they are they're already there since years, but they, we have no standard descriptions that we now collect. These are the base backbone for excursion. We have the already mentioned collaboration of Prozilla with uh, AFI from France and AFI, uh, European Forest Institute. Uh, this led to a very um, publication of a very practical handbook that you see on the picture that came from Bologna. The first version was in French. In the meantime, it was translated to English language, to German, and also will be translated to Hungarian language, I think, and to, uh, to the Dutch language also. So we try to have this multi-language to have a better spreading of our information. Um, one very important point is that we have a multiplication by all the members' activities. I just mentioned what ProSilva as an as a umbrella organization is doing. Each of the countries, each of the member countries are doing, having the same, their own activities and involving people and involving new members and so on. Uh, in the meantime, we had some success in forest policies in Ireland, in Hungary, in the Czech Republic and so on. Please go to the next one. So this is a picture, a series of pictures I am using since 25 years. We have to go from trees, from beautiful forests, to the products, to the sawmills. And uh, as the, on the right side of the picture, this cartoon uh, that was used by Dujan Linchek, that was uh, one of the inspirational uh, personalities at the founding of ProSilva, he uses this cartoon that shows the sorcerer that ecology and economy are the same. They are on the same rubber, on the same band that the sorcerer is holding in his hand. So we have a circular economy with integration of biodiversity and of course carbon storage in soil, in the trees, and as already mentioned, uh, uh, in the wooden products as substitutes for a higher energy consuming products. We have to care about the nutrient cycle, we have to care about biot biotop trees, about dead wood, one very important thing is we have genetic reserves. All our old forests have huge number of genes, of different genes. And if you take into account the epigenetic effects, that is also one very important part of adaption to climate change. Please, the next one. Um, ProSilva is always promoting integrational approach. We need structural diversity, we need the species diversity, so mixed forest again. We have to care about the scale level. We sometimes mix this on, in, and talk about stands or do we talk about landscape? So we have to have to uh, deal with all these scale levels. And of course, mixed structure forests have higher resilience uh, against different disasters. And the main important thing is that we all must use pure natural regeneration 
and have this huge gene pool in the forest that we use. A uh, little refer reference to the um, presentation of Claudia Onasaval. Um, I don't know really if the further set, uh, set aside forests will help us. Um, this is um, a push again to more segregational aspects and then we have on the other hand uh, agro farming or things like that, uh, biomass forests and so on. I think we should really focus on integrational of the functions. The static com concept of strict protection of old growth forest may help or it may not help because if the bark beetles are um, very active, um, maybe the, the old forest, old growth forest will be young forests in a few years. And so static indicators for biodiversity are also already to discuss, to be discussed. And this should be implemented in the forest strategy to have a dynamic approach to what is going on in the forest. Next one, please. Yeah, um, Natura 2000 in some cases showed us that it's perceived as a burden. This is resulting in a low acceptance. With the only uh, positive uh, ex um, um, examples are those where the approach was made bottom up and not top down. So you have to integrate, to have to talk with all the people, the landowners for, for whom the policies are made. So Procedure thinks the way is to have principles and guidelines. And on the other side, we have this technical handbook I already mentioned but the solutions have to be developed by the owner, the manager, according to site conditions and stand type. So we don't, we never gave strict prescriptions for any forest, uh, even if we know how it's working, but that should be, cannot put on the one standard. We have to empower the foresters. We have regions in Europe where there's, the interest is very low and the, the forest is hardly managed at all. So in the Mediterranean regions, for example, in some parts also in the mountainous regions, we have so many set aside forests that's per se set aside, but it's not under some uh, conservation regulation. Um, so we have to include the inputs of the forest owners and managers. Uh, we shouldn't have additional bureaucracy and we have to keep the motivation of the forest managers. This is the key factor. I think it's very important to have them motivated. Thank you. The next one. I'm almost at the finish because this is a, uh, the, this group is the, also covers, the intergroup also covers hunting. So I have to mention that hunting is one very important part for climate change adaption. We have in many regions of Europe, we have very high population of roe deer, red deer, and other ungulates that endanger natural regeneration, that endanger special tree species, which we need for the future for climate change, for example, silver fir oak. And we need a modern ecologic oriented hunting that includes, of course, knowledge of wildlife ecology, population dynamics, animal health, and also animal protection aspects. So without hunting, we wouldn't, will not have a climate change adaptive of forestry. The last one. Thank you. So uh, now we all, all a little bit locked down, but we hope there will be a, a phase of post-corona. And I hope we will soon be able to meet in the forest, not in the bureaus and not in front of our screens and its cameras and microphones. So uh, again, I think the main thing is to link practice, science and education to advance close to nature forest management. This was the slogan of the meeting in 2009, but it's still the same slogan that's really important to improve forestry. Uh, just if we're going now facing our 40th anniversary in 2029, then it's just 40 years that are 50, to 25% of a tree life. So we have also to take into account that we have just a small time slice where we can in influence something. But if you do the right thing, we can have a really 
big change. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Eckhart. Um, I have to say it's indeed, uh, uh, it would be a pleasure to meet you again uh, in a 3D forest, uh, which will be much more pleasant than after our, sitting after our webcams. Uh, but okay, that's not the case today, and we still have a third panelist uh, to go. And our third panelist for this evening is uh, Ronan Uhel, and he's the head of natural capital and ecosystems of the European Environment Agency. And in that function, he's also scientific advisor to the European Environment Agency Ex Executive Director. Mr. Uhel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, and good evening to you all. Um, I will not display any slides. In agreement with uh, the organizers, uh, we thought it would be better if I offer a set of commentaries on uh, everything that has been stated so far, and uh, from a very different angle, um, because we have been here uh, addressing most of the challenges we have ahead of us at the European level, at the national level, at the local level, when it comes to really envisioning what uh, forest management uh, uh, should be doing in the years to come uh, uh, to really respond to a number of uh, crises uh, that we uh, all observe and uh, uh, are going through. I would like to offer really a comment on uh, uh, what do we know of all these challenges? Uh, uh, what do we know of uh, the current uh, status of uh, uh, forest ecosystems in Europe? Uh, uh, what do we know of uh, the main trend lines uh, uh, when it comes to, for instance, uh, uh, forest extent, uh, forest conditions? What do we know of uh, 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 the trajectory we are on when it comes to reaping up the benefits of uh, uh, forest uh, 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 ecosystem services, etc.? So the, the, the buzzword here is really uh, uh, knowing. Uh, what kind of knowledge do we have if we are to sort of uh, 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 respond and uh, uh, monitor uh, uh, the way we are going to sort of uh, implement these new policies, the way we are trying to respond to the challenges? Uh, how do we manage to really uh, see uh, 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 the interconnectedness between these different challenges from uh, uh, biodiversity challenges, to climate change, to bioeconomy, to uh, uh, financing uh, even. Um, so there is an issue here which has to do with uh, uh, knowing better, knowing quick, and knowing for action, knowing for intervention. So what I would like to uh, uh, inform uh, 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 about this evening is about the fact that uh, uh, Commission Services and the EEA and many other partners uh, in Europe, I'm coming to that, are very now engaged into uh, providing uh, uh, an online service um, that will be hosted by the Forest Information System for Europe. So this uh, Forest Information System for Europe is not really anything new. Uh, 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 it is uh, very much something which was embedded into uh, the uh, uh, existing forest strategy for EU uh, 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 as uh, a necessary tool uh, to provide access to all the information we would need uh, 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 to conduct our policies or to have uh, debates about uh, 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 the effectiveness of the policies, uh, but first and foremost, uh, uh, to have really uh, uh, coherent information about uh, uh, status of forest in Europe. Now, the point is that uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, we cannot just uh, think of a forest information system for Europe as uh, a, a business as usual uh, 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 process of uh, sharing statistics, uh, uh, organizing data sets, uh, uh, building a couple of uh, uh, assessment reports around all of that. Uh, because if we would stay in uh, this uh, uh, sort of uh, approach, then no way we would be able to really, really inform proper uh, 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 the new policy infrastructure that is uh, becoming into in place uh, uh, through the uh, Green Deal uh, uh, implementation. And for all uh, uh, the uh, uh, objectives and uh, if not targets uh, that uh, Claudia Lezabal on behalf of the Commission just uh, introduced, which were very much indeed reflected by uh, 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 what we heard from the, the two previous panelists. So what we are really faced with is uh, 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 developing FIES, Forest Information for System for Europe, as a non-usual business. We have to really rethink uh, 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 the way uh, uh, we have to facilitate a number of uh, uh, access and uh, uh, information and knowledge services online for all, for everyone. 
So if it is really uh, uh, about that, uh, uh, what do we mean by it? Well, we mean by it that at the very core of PIs, for the next generation of uh, PIs, it is very much about informing, qualifying, quantifying the diversity of Europe's forests at all scales. They you say, we need to really reflect on the diversity of forest ecosystems across Europe in a sort of a very, very ecological coherence manner. They used to say, we need to have a, a, a better mapping of a, 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 a where and how forest ecosystems are, are, are developing in Europe. Their functions, because as it has been repeated many, many times, it's all about multifunctionality. It's not just about one function or the correlate, correlation of that will be, it's just about one forest service like a, a, a carbon sink. No, it's a multitude of uh, uh, services. It's a multitude of multifunctionality and all of them are completely sort of dependent on healthy forest. So the conditions of uh, uh, forest ecosystems is also something that we need to inform uh, uh, um, in terms of uh, their diversity, their functional diversity in Europe. And it comes also for the use of forest. Uh, um, and uh, it's not only uh, by the economy or uh, potentially by economy in the future, it's also use of people for many other uh, uh, reasons, uh, uh, amenities to well-being uh, 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 concerns. But it's also ev everything that has to do with uh, uh, maintaining uh, 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 natural resilience. And this is, uh, uh, I think, uh, fully explained by uh, 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 what is uh, uh, now covered by the new EU biodiversity uh, strategy for 2030. We bring ecosystems, we bring ecosystem resilience, we bring ecological coherence of uh, uh, EU territories uh, uh, at the very core of uh, 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 our uh, uh, um, uh, prosperity at our uh, uh, development model and uh, at the very core of a new uh, uh, project for society in Europe, bringing nature back in our lives. This is the slogan. So if it is really the case, where do we stand today in terms of uh, information services? Well, the difficulty is that we have been working for past 20 years on the forest information, forest knowledge, but we still have many gaps. And we have many gaps when it comes, for instance, to simple things like uh, uh, having coherent data sets coming from uh, different countries, coming from different uh, uh, inventories, uh, 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 regional or national, that we need to sort of uh, uh, completely bridge the gap. But we have also new challenges because uh, the way we collect information, the way we organize data flows, where the way we uh, 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 conceptualize forest indicators, all of that can be really helped by a, a, a better monitoring scheme, a better monitoring framework. And this is what uh, we need to do, to think of uh, what will be the most appropriate monitoring framework that Europe would like to go for uh, when it comes to uh, a, a new forest strategy in all the interactions, interdependencies, interconnections that we can observe with many other policy strategies. And there, we know that uh, 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 technologies, digitalization in particular, can come and help us because today information technologies are absolutely uh, uh, cutting edge. So, for instance, we just released uh, uh, yesterday, I think, in FIS, uh, 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 a new uh, 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 briefing on forest extent uh, uh, in Europe over the past two decades. It has been done for 80% of it based on Earth observation. Earth observation in combination with in-situ data, in combination with uh, inventories done by uh, uh, most of the countries. And then this uh, 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 information, which is there, tells us many things. It tells us that uh, 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 forest coverage in Europe is very stable, but with a huge diversity. We have clusters of growth, mostly in Eastern Europe, few, but we have. But we have many clusters of loss of forest. And what is interesting is that we can interpret that. We can localize, we can really categorize, we can sort of help inform uh, if it is due to some land conversion. And it is in most of the cases. 
we are still converting forest areas uh, to uh, 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 agriculture uh, in Europe. We are still giving up forest areas uh, uh, for extension of uh, uh, urban infrastructures, for economic infrastructures. But we can also break that down by uh, uh, different units. We can break that down by, uh, uh, for instance, river basins of floodplains. And then we can start explaining that, for instance, one of the important services of uh, forests, like uh, natural water retention, is disappearing. And then it might explain uh, uh, why we have indeed such intensity uh, 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 of floods uh, 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 in particular places. Just to illustrate that from one observation, uh, 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 we can go into assessing uh, 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 the dependencies and we can inform uh, what's really happening with uh, forest ecosystems in Europe and we can inform uh, 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 the need to indeed maintain healthy uh, forest ecosystems if we are indeed to respond to all these challenges, biodiversity, climate, bioeconomy, uh, 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 whatever have you. So the point of uh, forest information system for Europe uh, uh, in the next years is to say we need to work with all the ones who are indeed collecting, measuring, observing, and we need to sort of uh, uh, bring all this uh, 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 information to create uh, 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 knowledge that would be absolutely appropriate for the different policies. How are we going to do that? Well, we need to work together. And uh, uh, so in order to sort of uh, make FISE uh, this platform that we would need at the European level, we have to work with uh, many, many partners in the countries. So we have established a group of uh, 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 data providers, data users in Europe. And I can tell you, if I would go for the list of the uh, uh, organizations which are participating, uh, 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 it, it, it might take another potential hour uh, 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 in, in this uh, um, gathering today. But just to mention a few, uh, 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 we, we work with the EFI, we work with uh, uh, eu 4 gen we work with uh, CPF, we work with uh, USTAFOR, uh, 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 and we work with all national forest inventories, but the list is very long. Just to say that, uh, uh, how do we do? Well, we try to meet uh, 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 every month to have really discussions around the work plan, how to share data, how to create uh, 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 data flows, which uh, 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 tools to use, because technology is now site today, digitalization uh, uh, is really helping. So we are uh, uh, kind of uh, challenged by uh, uh, the requirements that are coming to us uh, uh, as uh, uh, owner of uh, the forest information system. Uh, but at the very same time, we know that uh, 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 having high ambitions is helped by the fact that uh, uh, we have tools and we have partnerships uh, uh, that today uh, can respond to the challenge. So what I would like to conclude on is to say that uh, 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 for all the challenges which have been described uh, up to now, uh, 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 we should be able to really respond with uh, the appropriate knowledge. The knowledge requirements uh, transpiring from all these policy objectives are simply, simply enormous. But uh, Forest Information System for Europe uh, has the ambition uh, uh, to really address uh, uh, all these challenges and to respond with uh, 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 the necessary knowledge. And it will be the, in different forms. It will be for different use. It will be about story maps. It will be about fact sheets. It will be about data sets. It will be interactive maps. It will be whatever we can invent that is needed today. So the main message to conclude is uh, 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 it is really a tool for all involved in uh, 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 what will become indeed the forest strategy for Europe. But it can only happen as a, a knowledge platform if all involved are going to share uh, 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 what they observe, what they monitor, so that we can all contribute to having this monitoring framework uh, for the forest strategy in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ronan. The living proof that also without a PowerPoint presentation, a strong presentation can be given even uh, making use of webinar software. Um, we now have had uh, all of our panelists. That gives us some time for questions and, of course, also for answers. And um, I have to say that uh, for members of the European Parliament and intergroup board members, uh, if you have an interest of asking a question, please mention your name in the chat box so that our technicians can give you the floor and you can ask your question. For the others, um, Please, uh, if you have a question, make use of our questions. 
uh, box, which you will find in the panel on the right side of your screen. And then we will do our best to take on board most of your questions uh, within the live uh, chat. Um, a first uh, question um, I would like to ask is coming from Harold Maser. And right, I have to bring that to the front so that I can read it at least. Um, and he was asking a question specifically to Claudio, but I think that maybe other of the of the panelists are interested uh, to give their view. To decide which kind of forest we need in the future, in which location, one would need a look on the future landscape we want to have. Which kind of landscape do we want in a region? And what is the role and place for this for forests in this landscape? This effort should not start with discussing forests. It should start with discussing landscapes. And from this, the discussion on first have to be derived. And where in this discussion on future landscape that was to be done region by region. So the question here, do we have to start from the forest view or do we have to start from the landscape uh, view? OK, Claudia, I will first of all, will ask you to, to give a, an answer or at least a comment to this one. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? we can hear you very good um well have, it, it would have to be both because while while we do see regional policies and regional strategies and also more local uh strategies on on what kind of mosaic and landscape uh, and spatial that need to be taken into account so i think both things would need to uh, would need to be uh, very carefully and seamlessly um, brought together from the two sides okay thank you claudia for this i don't know uh, ronan uh, from your point of view uh starting from a forest or from from a landscape what do you think Ah, okay. Yes, I, 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 now we hear you. <laughs> someone was muting me. Um, so definitely the landscape perspective. Uh, 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 and uh, for a reason that today is absolutely embedded into uh, 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 the very objectives uh, for 2030 uh, uh, through, for instance, uh, the restoration plan and the, the biodiversity strategy uh, uh, that Claudia was referring to. Because what is really at stake uh, uh, with uh, this restoration plan, uh, it is uh, very much about uh, uh, the ecological continuum of Europe. And at the very core of the biodiversity strategy, uh, uh, you have uh, a term which is absolutely important when it comes to uh, uh, healthy and uh, productive ecosystems. It is ecological coherence. And the ecological coherence of Europe uh, uh, is this mosaic of ecosystems. This mosaic of ecosystems and ecosystems, they are dependent to each other. So when it comes to uh, uh, from marine to terrestrial to aquatic ecosystems, we are talking about uh, 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 this ecological coherence for Europe. And without this coherence, that you say at the level of landscape, if we don't have indeed uh, 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 an approach whereby uh, uh, we balance very well uh, uh, protection uh, uh, through effectiveness plans, uh, 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 at the same time, uh, uh, proper uh, uh, sustainable management, as we call it, for instance, for forest, sustainable forest management, it has to be indeed uh, 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 based on ecosystem-based management. And ecosystem-based management, it's not something completely new. It might be a bit new in Europe, 
But this is something that we have at the core of uh, uh, the marine legislation in Europe. This is what we have at the core of the Water Framework Directive in Europe. And that would be definitely something that now we have at the core of the biodiversity strategy. Ecosystem-based management is something that other uh, 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 countries in the world have uh, 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 very, very long time ago, completely, completely enshrined into their policy intervention. This is the case of Costa Rica for, for their beautiful forest. This is a case in Australia for the management of uh, uh, their very rich uh, 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 ecosystems. So landscape level, definitely to secure eco ecological coherence. Thank you very much. That's a very clear answer to this question. And I will move on to a following question. And I will ask Frederick uh, to answer this one. It's also specifically, uh, it was also specifically mentioned. It's a question coming from Helene Koch, and she's asking, should the common forestry policy now be at the national or at the European level? Yes, I think the main uh, directives um, must become from um, European Union in a um, logical policy from the European Union, and uh, it must be transposed in um, Belgium or uh, regional, because in Belgium we are uh, a country with, uh, where the, the policies are uh, regionalized, so uh, it must be um, uh, transposed in a, a regional um, law uh, for the, the main uh, principles of uh, European uh, directives. Okay, thank you very much. I have a question from uh, Doreen Roopmaker, and uh, she's she's putting a number of question marks. Uh, and first of all, she's asking how realistic is it to plant 300 million trees per year for a period of, of 10 years? And yeah, in reality, the question she's asking herself, is this biodiversity strategy really going to work? But uh, Claudia, maybe you can give us a, a first idea of uh, how much proof and scientific uh, support the Commission uh, has built up uh, towards the biodiversity strategy. Right, we don't we don't hear you. You have to switch on your microphone. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, we basically had evidence that uh, we are plant we are having around 280 million trees a year, new trees. Uh, what is now happening in the EU, and um, and the idea was, and that's that's a combination of planting and that's a combination of natural uh, reforestation that uh, that we have those estimates coming from the John Research Center and largely. As 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 uh, Ronald was saying on on um, remote sensing data, but basically the idea was to double that, and to double that, uh, meaning uh, half half a half a million, uh, roughly half a million uh, tree uh, per year, and 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 uh, we we multiply by a number of years, and we thought basically that this roughly doubling the current uh, increase of trees um, would be a, would be achievable in the 10 years it, it's important to to highlight that in order to indeed uh, achieve this we need to find the places where to plant them and that means in in forest areas but also in agricultural areas and also in urban areas we need the mechanisms and we need also the funding. And also this three billion planting trees pledge, it's also the, the we would like to have a frame because what we are seeing is there are enormous amount of um, private planting pledges, mushrooming around a lot of uh, companies, uh, a, lot of, a lot of organizations are setting compensation uh, like uh, air miles, compensation systems where they plant the trees. Uh, there are uh, companies, multinationals, uh, doing their planting plates so that we can make a framework to also um, help all these private pledges 
to be also included in this. So it would not only be done or necessarily be done by uh, or driven uh, by public authorities, or in cities would largely be done so, but it could so certainly be also fostered by private initiatives. And what we want to do is a frame that would also allow private initiatives to do it well, to do it in the right places, with the right species, uh, with the right long-term planning. So this is a bit uh, what we would like to develop in the, in the European Forest Strategy. But in terms of numbers, uh, just to reassure you that it's not, uh, 3 billion sounds a lot, but in, a, in actually, um, it's 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 largely feasible in the EU. Okay, that's a, a positive message. Uh, I have a kind of fo uh, follow-up question, but I will ask uh, Eckhart uh, to to give uh, some comments on that. Um, do you consider that, let's say, the EU Green Deal and then in particular the the, the EU Biodiversity Strategy will concretely improve? the multifunctional role of uh, EU forests. Now oh, I may, yeah, but this was not me, this was the organizer that made me, um, stop me. I, yeah, I hope so. I think we, the, the strategy should uh, have, um, rely on all this experience on in the countries that's already there, uh, starting from Estonia, going to the Balkans or from Portugal to Romania. We have so many uh, experience and the foresters know uh, a lot of their special problems. So this should be involved, implemented and also uh, integrated in, a, in the concept of the forest strategy. So a combination of general guidelines, maybe and national guidelines and a local local based solutions. Yeah, I hope this gave you some idea. No, so excellent. Involve all people on all stages. Don't think always top down. Rely on the bottom up approach. Involve okay, the farmers, motivate them. Bring them into, empower them, give them uh, subsidies, give them incentives, of course, uh, but money alone will not make it. It makes the, the humans make, make it. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Roland, I have seen you nodding very hard while uh, Eckhart was uh, answering this question. The next question is, is, is linked to it again. Uh, it's a question uh, which was coming uh, from uh, Zoltan Kuhn and uh, he's asking, do you think it is possible and needed to have each single forest stand to be multifunctional? Or would it be acceptable uh, that there are certain prioritizations in the forest stands? In other words, can there be forests where, for instance, you have nature conservation uh, having playing a more important role, where you have other forests where timber, harvest is, timber harvesting is much more important or carbon storage or another ecosystem service. It works. Um, in uh, the massive conference that was held last year by the European Commission on the uh, uh, future of European forest, uh, uh, a representative of forest owners uh, 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 started this uh, intervention and uh, really went around this intervention uh, uh, about one huge concern is to say, you may be asking me to replant trees, but you have to understand that my responsibility would then be a responsibility for the next 50 to 100 years. So what kind of tree do I need to plant? Do I need to plant a tree uh, 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 that is going to make my business survive? Or do I need to really uh, 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 plant a tree that will contribute to indeed restoring some ecosystem services for which then I can be uh, 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 retributed for? And this is the same notion that we have heard uh, 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 in one of uh, the uh, discussions, debates around uh, the reform of the common agricultural policy. Why not bringing back really a, a payment of ecosystem services as the main mechanism 
uh, to really facilitate revenues uh, 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 in this case for farmers, but it might be also the case for uh, uh, forest owners. And that connects very much then uh, to what Eckhart was saying, uh, 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 local knowledge. Local knowledge. Uh, so if, if we are to be very, very uh, uh, serious about uh, uh, restoring ecosystems, it is with the view that uh, we depend very much on uh, 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 the services that they deliver. But these services are part of a kind of uh, 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 huge connectivity. Hence my point about uh, 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 ecological coherence. And it is absolutely clear that in such an approach, we are going to completely erase what we have done for the past 100 years and overnight, uh, 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 just uh, redesign the new system completely. No, it is it is very trans transformational. It is transitional, and we need to really study very carefully what will be indeed uh, the optimization process. The optimization process, and sometimes it will be issues of trade-off, because indeed replanting some forests for increasing uh, uh, carbon sink might be very detrimental for uh, uh, local regional biodiversity patterns. We know that studies are uh, all over the place to demonstrate it. So the, the, the point has also to do with uh, uh, working across scales, because uh, uh, if we would, for instance, uh, uh, rethink uh, uh, of uh, forest systems in Europe, mostly uh, uh, to help on uh, 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 this carbon sink uh, uh, issue, well, what, what would be the effect compared to uh, 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 the uh, some degradation of boreal forest at the pan-European scale, where we know that the main challenge is uh, 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 toxicity of uh, methane, methane release. So what would be the kind of uh, balancing effect uh, uh, to release this to the atmosphere? Then we need to study that as well uh, 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 in terms of uh, 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 doing something here that could be completely counterbalanced or completely, completely uh, 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 defeated uh, by uh, something at a larger scale. So we need to study that carefully because the investment is not an investment for tomorrow. The investment is there for us to stay for the next 50, 100 years. And I think uh, uh, that consideration and what Eckhart was saying in terms of uh, people know, the ones who are really managing, they know there is local traditional knowledge all over the place when it comes to forest management in Europe. We need to start there. Thank you uh, very much. Um, I have a very practical question. And Claudio, I think uh, you are the ideal person to answer this one. It's a question coming from Andre Thiemann. And he's asking uh, if an assessment and mapping of forest ecosystem services will be considered in the new EU forest strategy. Mm -hmm. No, not yet. Now you hear me? Now we hear you. <laughs> okay, I, I, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, well, the, the, if, you, if you see in the biodiversity strategy, in the context of the legally binding instrument and the impact assessment that will be done for this legally binding instrument, there's also um, the, the paragraph that says that we would be looking at a methodology for assessment of the state of ecosystems and, uh, and how to achieve a good condition of ecosystems. So that is already uh, something that we would look at more broadly, not only for forests, more broadly, this kind of methodology we would be looking at very much based on the on the mapping and assessment of ecosystem services that has been done for years with the the JRC colleagues uh, and with member states and so that that's a long-standing uh, exercise so that we will be of course taking stock of all this so this is already part of, of what will be looked upon in the context of the legally binding instrument uh, more widely as I said uh, beyond forest for also other types of ecosystems. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and then I have a question coming from uh, Michel Bott, who, who says he's a member of NTF. Um, uh, and even then, I, I would think that Frederick is maybe uh, able to, to answer his question. 
um, the problem of forests must be seen in a more general context, encompassing first and foremost the problem of water. Forests, in fact, regulate humidity in the air, rainfall, the streams that are the source of life and across borders. But water also becomes a risk uh, of conflict. Um, how important is water for our forest and how risky are the droughts we have seen during the last years? Uh, Frederick, uh, what is your feeling from within the field? <clears throat> Um, water is um, a very important factor for uh, the health of uh, forests and uh, forests preserve um, and regulate the cycle of, um, of water. So uh, there is uh, water is a necessity for the uh, the good life of forest, but forest uh, regulate the, the cycle of uh, water. So it's a very important factor for um, uh, in the two uh, directions in the two senses. I don't know if I have uh, answered the que this uh, question or not. <laughs> But I see that uh, Claudia would like to, to assist at least <laughs> answering this one. <laughs> Please, Claudia. Um, if now if you you're struck, yeah, now we can hear you. I would I, say I if, if the, you're. I hear the hand. Um, I think this is a very important question. And if you see in, in a number of Mediterranean countries, um, reforestation and afforestation has been for for des decades now being used as as um, help as a help for fighting against desertification, and and in terms of uh, water retention, in terms of um, of indeed uh, helping regulate the climate, but at the same time those are areas that are suffering and will suffer even more for from water scarcity in the future. So there, the issue of the species choice is crucial. The choice of the species which are adapted to the, the existing and new uh, future pedoclimatic conditions is crucial. So there, there indeed, the knowledge gathering and at and, and local level, but other research in terms of the choice of species would allow us to use forest to counteract desertification and droughts um, and at the same time, put the right species so that they will be able to stand and 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 uh, and be less vulnerable to water scarcity. So, species uh, uh, choice is a crucial discussion there. Well, Claudia, as you mentioned, that uh, species choice is, is crucial. I have to say that uh, one out of four questions is exactly on that uh, choice on species where people are uh, asking, uh, to what extent would you consider to plant exotic tree species in afforestation, reforestation and restoration? Um, maybe they are invasive, uh, but also quite often more adapted to future climate patterns of the EU. Uh, is there a role to play for exotic uh, tree species in solving this problem? Uh, Claudia, I will start with you, but I will also ask the others uh, to give a comment on this one. Now, um, this is good because right two days ago we were having exactly this discussion in the working group on nature and forest with all the member states, uh, uh, foresters and, and, and people from environmental ministries and, and the stakeholders uh, when we were discussing the guidelines on afforestation. And, and while we were, I think there was a common understanding that, that uh, uh, natives and uh, locally adapted species need to be uh, favored. There was already a discussion, and I think we, we haven't finished that because it's going to be a crucial dilemma. What would there be the need of, of, um, of introducing new species, which not necessarily need to be alien to the EU, but perhaps not to the ones that were being used in those regions? Um, and and what about uh, what we, we we had long discussion about um, 
pioneer species. Uh, I mean, Croatia and Flanders, for, for instance, they put the examples both that they had been using poplars, which are not they are not alien species to Europe, but are, were not native uh, there. But in terms of uh, assisted migration, and, and those pioneer species actually helped by, by the litter they were producing, etc. They were helping um, autochthonous species to come back. So in that sense, there needs to be a gathering of information. Uh, it will be a dilemma. It, that I think that we will be at, so I don't have a, a, a reply to this. Certainly, invasive alien species, that, that's not the way to go. It's to what extent uh, non-native species could have a role in, in afforestation. This is exactly at the heart of the discussions we are having, and, uh, and uh, we are not at the end of it, because it will be a hard discussion to have. Uh, what margin of maneuver or what margin or what role for non-native species in afforestation to take account of, as we say, the pioneer effect or future climate change uh, um, effect. So, yeah, difficult discussion that, that we are having right, right almost as we speak. Yeah, indeed, a difficult discussion. I see that uh, Eckhart also would like to comment. Uh, please, Eckhart, do so. Okay, uh, I just want to mention that you have to distribute the risk. We, of course, we have to mix species. We shouldn't stick to one species for one uh, stand for one side. And we have to take into account that we, if we uh, take, for example, plants from a, a certain source, from some nursery, uh, is there enough uh, genetic bandwidth uh, within this population? Because in in the past century, the past decades, we made the the mistake sometimes to take just one uh, provenience, and if this fails, all fails. So you have to mix it, and also uh, again, I want to uh, make sure that we have to use the pioneer species as assistance for the others. So we don't have enough the, and and the the non-native trees should be able to integrate in an ecosystem approach. They shouldn't be invasive or being so strong that the other species have no chance uh, to, to uh, come in the circle of forest development. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ronan, I have been seeing you nodding very hard. <laughs> Maybe you have to give your opinion on this which will be very similar to what uh, Claudia and Eckhart just said. Uh, uh, and this is really where we would need to sort of uh, study very carefully because uh, 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 experts uh, uh, in ecology, uh, 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 in, in bioclimatic uh, uh, sort of uh, ecosystems, etc., are sort of uh, playing with uh, uh, this notion of new ecosystems which has been coined uh, 10 years ago at the global level uh, 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 when it was about uh, uh, this uh, disappearance, degradation, uh, uh, vanishing of uh, coral reefs. Uh, but that can be applied as a concept to uh, restoring uh, uh, ecosystem or substituting or replacing whatever we want to name it. So there is an extreme uh, 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 in the question that was posed indeed to say, uh, uh, well, since bioclimatic conditions in Europe are changing from a gradient north-south, but also from west-east, uh, 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 what does it mean indeed for adaptability of uh, different species? And uh, 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 do we have in Europe uh, uh, sufficient uh, 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 what the American would call uh, uh, ecological niche modeling, right? Uh, to appreciate, uh, uh, depending on uh, the uh, diversity of bioclimatic conditions, what would be indeed uh, the adaptability of uh, 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 new species, new ecosystems, etc. That's a fundamental question. Now, uh, 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 we cannot today say that we have to go to this extreme. No, we, we have to go to an approach whereby uh, 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 we are clearly, clearly uh, 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 restoring some ecological coherence and what is absolutely clear uh, uh, from ecology is that the more we restore this uh, uh, coherence 
then resilience will be there for the ecosystems to take care of themselves through changes. This is the fundamental. And for the time being, we don't have coherence, so we can't really count on resilience. So this is where it is absolutely important uh, uh, to put at the very core of uh, what we are trying to do, uh, uh, this restoration of uh, 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 a functional coherence of uh, uh, ecosystems in Europe. Okay, thank you very much. We are quite close to the end of this session. Uh, for that, I would first of all like to thank our panelists. I would like to thank Claudia, Frederick, Eckhart and Ronan for their participation. And uh, normally, uh, Simon will now uh, give the concluding remarks. So can we switch over to, to Simon Schmidbauer, please? Once again, yes, you could, you can hear me now. Okay, on the way. Okay, thank you so much. I hope you found um, our event interesting and that it pointed out the right challenges for the future EU forest strategy. The rural community is ready to make changes. However, those changes have to be implemented progressively. This is why this event is, I think, essential to discuss the burning issues early in the decision-making process. Furthermore, it is required to improve the coordination at all levels, between owners and industries, but also between EU institutions and with the EU Commission itself. The sustainability of EU forests and its role for climate adaptation and mitigation should be well incorporated in the future strategy. Looking into innovative ways of founding the sector, including carbon farming. Overall, all the forest owners are willing to play an active part in the future Green Deal for Europe. Their first concern, however, is to restore degraded forest stands caused by climate change and to improve the resilience of the forest ecosystems. Forest owners are part of the solution to protect the climate. We have knowledge, we have ability to work on sustainable solutions in the field of forestry and environmental protection. The demand from society for quite different forest services and goods is steadily increasing. These benefits are supplied by forest owners, very often free of charge. There is a need to reward the stewards of the land that is making a positive contribution to biodiversity and climate, and we must be ready to support it. We see our forests have various mission to fulfill. It is important to stress that ecological, economic and social output and sustainability go hand in hand and are not contradicting. We just need to die the ends. So I'm sure this intergroup will continue debating on EU strategies, implementing the EU Green Deal with an open mind and please a pragmatic will. So at the end, please to all stay safe during this um, sure very, very difficult time, but do not stop gathering and discussing our future. At the end, Eckhart said, the human will do it, not the money. Human did it at the past. They do it in the present, and of course they will do it in the future with knowledge and with help for, with help. So let us work together hand in hand for our forests. And thank you so much for the attention, your, your inputs and for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. Uh, I think we can conclude uh, this webinar and I have to say we have probably never been sitting further from each other, but we have never been standing closer together. I wish you a very pleasant evening from Brussels, capital of Europe. Good evening. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Thank you, Mr. Senitza and everyone. I don't know if there are still people, but I'm going to close and end the event. Thank you all for your participation. <laughs>